My name is Keshwani. That's K E S H W A N I, Keshwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the GRE. We have been solving GRE math questions, math problems out of this book here. The official guide to the GRE, the revised journal test. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. The problem that I'm about to solve is the one that you will find on page number 232. And today is our lesson number 112. The problem on the top about the radios, problem number problem number 2.7.6 on, on the top of the page. It says to produce a particular radio model, it costs a manufacturer $30 per radio. Turn to the page and read the problem with me. Page 232. It costs manufacturers $30 per radio, which is what there is. Cost per radio is $30. They go on to say that uh, if 500 radios are produced and all of them are sold, number sold is 500. 500 are produced and all of them are sold. What must be the selling price? So we have to find the selling price here. What should be the selling price? What must be the selling price to ensure that the profit on the 500 radio, the profit on the 500 radio, the required profit is more than $8,200. That's all. How many do we need to sell? So let's solve it, shall we? Here is our solution. Let P be the selling price. Our unknown here is P. P for the price. That's the price. So it's an atrocious handwriting. Let P be the selling price. If P is the price, then it implies, therefore, P minus 30 must represent the profit for radio for radio for example for example here p represents the price for example if p happens to be $42 if you're selling it for $42 and it costs you and the cost is $30 for a radio and the selling price is $42 for a radio then you must make if the selling price happens to be $42 and the cost is $30 you must make a profit of $12 per radio which, which is your P minus the cost the cost is $30 P minus the thirty dollars if p happens to be if p happens to be fifty dollars if price happens to be fifty dollars then the profit is going to be twenty dollars per, per radio which is same again your price minus the cost so p minus thirty p minus thirty represents the profit per radio and how many radios are we selling we're selling five hundred radios so 500 times the profit per radio must represent the total profit. That implies the total profit equals the number that we are selling, number of radios sold, equals the number of radio number of radios sold times Profit per radio. Number of radios sold is 500, and the profit per radio is right here, P minus 500, P minus 30 rather. That's your total profit. And this amount, and this amount we are told, the total profit, the manufacturer wants to make sure that he sells at a price where it generates, a, gener generates him a profit of more than 8,200. This profit has to be more than. 8,200. That's it. We are done. We have to solve this inequality. We have to solve this inequality for P. That's what it is. 
we're going to do that on the top of the page, on top of the blackboard. I need, to, I need the room, so we're going to erase all of this thing now. That's it. We have our inequality. We have our inequality, we just have to solve it. 500 times P minus 30 equals 8200. But if you were to divide, if you were to divide both sides by 100, if you divide, divide both sides by 100, then divide this side by 100, you divide this side by 100, this two zero cancel out with these two zero, and these two zeros cancel out with these two zeros. In other words, I didn't have to show you, I didn't have to show you the intermediate step, the baby step, we could simply done this part. Knock out the two zeros from both sides, knocking out two zeros from both sides of the inequality. Oh, this is an inequality, not an equality. This is an inequality. It doesn't change anything. The rules of solving the equation are the same rules as solving the inequality, except when you're multiplying or dividing by a negative number, which I don't think we will here, because we can divide by positive 5. That's it. So now we have to divide both sides by 5. Oh, we have to Oh, we have to open the parentheses. 5 times p is 5p, and 5 times 30 is negative 150. It's greater than 82. Add 150 to both sides. If you add 150 to both sides, this negative 150 and a positive 150, they're going to cancel each other out. And we're left with 5p is greater than 150 plus 82. 232. Again, we need the room, so let's erase this bottom part here. Two hundred and thirty-two comes here. Five p is greater than two hundred and thirty-two. Divide both sides by five. We divide both sides by five. This five drops out, and p is greater than whatever that amount is. Do it here. 232 over 5. How many 5s in a 2? There are 0 5s in a 2. This 2 goes and joins this 3, becomes 23. How many 5s in 23? There are 4 5s in 23. The remaining 3 goes and joins this guy, becomes 32. How many 5s in a 32? There are 32. 30 divided, 30 divided by 5 is 6. 6, 5, and then 2 remaining. So that's your answer. 20. 46 and 2 fifths. The price has to be greater than 46 dollars and 2 fifths. 46 and 2 fifths dollar. What's the fifth of a dollar? A tenth of a dollar is 10 cents. A fifth of a dollar is 20 cents. A tenth is 20 cents, therefore 2 fifths is 40 cents. So this, is, this turns out to be 46 dollars and 40 cents. That's it. If the, manuf if the manufacturer if the manufacturer wants to make sure that he gets a profit of something more than eight thousand two hundred dollars, if he wants to profit, if he, if he wants a profit of more than eight thousand two hundred dollars, then he has to charge a price of at least forty-six. It's not at least, rather, it's not. A, there is no equal sign here. He has to charge a price of more than forty-six dollars and twenty. Uh, forty-six dollars and forty cents. That's it. That's all. We're done. Starting from tomorrow, we'll start uh, problems dealing with interest rate. First we'll do what is known as a simple interest rate. And then we'll do uh, a couple of problems dealing with compound interest rate. But that will be starting from tomorrow, as I said. I'll see you. That, and that's the last topic. Simple interest rate and compound interest rate are the two la or other interest rate is the last topic that they're covering under the heading of algebra and then we start geometry. I'll see you tomorrow, okay? Bye now.